Hey guys, uh, on um, Stat 1150, uh, on Blackboard, uh, under Handouts, there's, there's a, uh, a file that says Confidence Intervals Examples, uh, Means and Proportions. So if you're interested in following along, uh, which, you know, which I kind of hope you do, uh, you, you might want to download that and print it out. So uh, what I want to do is I just want to walk through some, uh, some examples here. So... Uh, first example, the National Center for Education and Statistics would like to understand more about the length of time required for students to complete their bachelor's degree. Uh, they collect a random sample of 35 students. Uh, those 35 students had a mean graduation uh, completion of 4.8 years and a sample standard deviation of 2.2. Uh, the purpose of this problem is to construct a confidence interval to estimate the length of time required for all students. It doesn't say it, but that's what we're thinking, uh, to complete their bachelor's degree. What type of interval? Well, guys, this is called a T interval because we are estimating uh, mu, which is the population mean, which is uh, length of time required for all students. Not just these 35, but all students. Calculate degrees of freedom. <laughs> well, guys, this is really easy. When sample size is uh, uh, 35. So um, our degrees of freedom would be 34. Now, the next problem, use stack crunch to find the t-critical value. And uh, what we're going to assume here, <clears throat> again, um, let me see if I can get that a little bit clearer. Okay. Uh, what we're going to assume here is that we're doing a 95% confidence interval. All right, so degrees of freedom at 34. So, gang, this is going to be really easy. Uh, go to stat, go to calculator, go to T, choose between. So, our degrees of freedom are 34, <clears throat> and we want point. 95 area because it's a 95% confidence interval so our T critical is 2.0322 all right I was writing that down so let's go back over here um, the media often mistakenly report, reports results of studies like this one. For example, they may state that the average length of time required for students to complete their bachelor's degree is 4.8 years based on uh, the information we got from our sample. Why is this incorrect to, to state? Uh, well, uh, we're estimating mu. And mu is unknown. Furthermore, 4.8 is from our sample. So x bar is 4.8. We are trying to estimate mu. We don't know mu. So it's, it's, uh, it's wrong because they're assuming that the sample mean is going to be equal to what we're looking for, the population mean, and uh, we never know. We might get lucky and that is the value, but we don't know. Uh, m most likely it's not. Construct a 95% confidence interval using the formula. Well, guys, remember we take x bar plus or minus t star times the standard deviation over the square root of n. So x bar is uh, 4.8 plus or minus our t star was 2.0322. Our standard deviation was 2.2. And we had a sample size of 35. So grab a calculator. Do the minus first. Do it again. Uh, just come over and change the minus to a plus. So what are we, 
to 5.56. Interpret an interval. Interpret the interval. There is a 0.95 probability. This interval contains the average length of time. For all students to complete their degree, well, bachelor's degree. Be pretty quick if they were done a PhD. Uh, use stat crunch to calculate the confidence interval. So where do we go? Stat. T stat, one sample summary, because we do not have our data. We have a summary. We've got our mean and our standard deviation given to us. So the mean is 4.8. The standard deviation is 2.2. Sample size is 35. Confidence interval is 0.95 and you will see that we get the same answer. Alright, calculate the margin of error. Easy guys, remember, big number minus small number divided by 2. So the margin of error is plus or minus 0 0.76. All right, next problem. A higher education administrator would like to use the results from a recent survey to estimate the percentage of students who owe more than $20,000 for their undergraduate education. Right there, estimate the percentage. That makes it a proportion problem. Upon tallying the results from the survey, the administrator finds that 448 of the 1,280 sampled owe more than 20,000 for their undergraduate education. Um, what type of interval is this? Uh, this is actually called a one prop Z interval. What proportion of the sample reported they had loans? In other words, what's the value for P hat? Well, guys, remember P hat is the count out of the total. So our count is 448 out of 1280. So 35% of our sample has a student loan debt of 20000 or more. And guys, I, I keep pointing this out because I see goofiness like this all the time. And it's just wrong. A reporter from a university newspaper found their result online and wrote an article titled 35% of college students have more than 20,000 in student loan debt. Is this a correct statement? No, absolutely not. 35% of the people in our sample, 1,280 people, has student loan debt 20,000 or more. We're trying to estimate for all. And guys, to do that, you have to uh, use a confidence interval. We don't know. If we knew this, we wouldn't even be conducting this study. Um, we're conducting this study because we don't know the percentage of students. We know the percentage of those 1280, but we're looking for the percentage of all. 
Uh, use the confidence interval formula to construct the 95% confidence interval. You guys, remember this is p hat plus or minus z star. Square root p hat. 1 minus p hat over n. So p hat was 0 0.35. Plus or minus the z star is 1.96 for the 95% confidence interval. p hat, 0.35, 1 minus p hat is 0.65, and our sample size was 1280. Now guys, these are a little harder to put in your calculator, but still it is doable. So it looks like 0 0.324, 2.376. Now these things are usually reported in percentages, so 32.4% to 37.6%. All right, what's the margin of error? Big number minus small number over 2. So plus or minus 2.2. Six percent. Interpret your interval. Well, guys, I'm not going to write this out because uh, I think it's it's uh, it's obvious. Well, yes, I am. I want to I want to be thorough here. Uh, there is a 0.95 probability this interval. and contains the percentage of all students who have student loan debt exceeding $20,000. Now guys, the thing about this, you know, you, if you would written that, it may, you may have used a little different wording. Uh, you, you don't have to come up with these on your own. All you have to be able to do is uh, to select the correct one from a multiple choice or fill in the blank, so parts of it, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's easier to do. All right, gang, uh, final question. Use Stack Crunch. Uh, this, is what we, this is what we all live for, right? This is the, this is the easy stuff. Proportion stats, one sample with summary. So the number of successes looked like it was, um, what, 448? Number of observations was 1280. Confidence interval 0.95, standard wall. Guys, we're ready to plug and chug. So notice out here you get 0.324, which is what we got before, and 0.376, which we got before much, much, much easier um, than the other way. All right, guys, I want to show, one, show you one that comes up a lot, a variation of a problem that drives my students insane. I want to show you how to take care of it. Um, 27% of the 1,250 sampled stated they believe in ghost. K 
calculate a 95% confidence interval. Now, what happens here is when you go to stack crunch, okay, again, 27% of 1250. When you go to stack crunch and try to do what I've taught you to do, and you put in 0.27, out of 1250, select confidence interval and hit compute, it's going to give you an answer that's wrong because it asks you for the count, not the percentage. Remember, p hat is the count over the total. Now granted, the total was 1250. But the count isn't 27%, it's 27% of 1250. So actually the count's going to be 338, we'll round up or round appropriately. So now when we go to stack crunch, we can actually enter the count and enter the total correctly. We know the 27% is our sample, so we know that has to be in the center. And then we build this interval around it using margin of error that I've taught you kind of ad nauseum in the past uh, uh, three or four videos. So when we got something goofy like this back before, well, we were between, what, 0.005? I mean, your quantitative literacy component uh, <laughs> in your brain should, should, should kick in and say, well, that can't be right. My, it, the sample said 27%. We know that the sample information has to be in the center of the interval, so you, you, know, you should automatically know that uh, that's incorrect. However, when you do proportion statistics correctly, and put in the, what we say, 338 out of 1250. Choose the confidence level. Hit compute. You can see we get something reasonable, 24.6% to 29.5%. And our sample proportion is right at 27%. All right, gang. That's all I got. Take care.